Good morning. Welcome, welcome. It's 2024. Let's talk about what we got going on this year. One, I wanted to just make this video to talk about some of the changes that are going to be happening in my business for this year. One to kind of catalog for myself, but also just like, again, keep you guys in the loop and in the journey. My business has changed so much. So this year in May will be five years since I started my business, which is wild. And I just wrapped up my second year full time. So there's going to be a lot that changes this year. Honestly, basically the whole way I made money last year is going to be completely flipped. And I'm excited for that. Also, really, really nervous um, because it's something new. And when you start something new in your business, it is terrifying. <laughs> But I am honestly like so excited to just jump more into art and do something that's a little scary. I always feel like if you're not scared, it's probably not big enough. And honestly, I'm pretty terrified <laughs> um, because I mean, it, this is my job. So I do have to make money in this business. And the way I'm doing it right now is just like not super sustainable for our long-term goals as far as where we want the business to go, um, where I want to be like in my personal life, um, and that kind of thing in the next like five years. So basically, um, long story short of just, there's going to be a lot of changes. I think the nerves of doing something different in your business really comes one from the unknown, but two, it's going to take some time to rebuild, um, back up or build up what I'm planning on doing. And that's okay and I have to like recognize that in myself. It's almost like you take a step back to try something or try something a little bit different that could lead to 10 to step forward or you know it could be gradually a step, a step, a step, a step and that's just really the compounding effect of you know doing something in your business for a long time and if it's something new it's going to take some time to maybe get off the ground. So. What are the changes that are happening in Southwood for 2024? Let me tell you. So first things first, um, I'm going to be really focusing on getting some of my time back and that means doing less shows this year. So last year, I did 15 shows in total. I was scheduled for 16, but with my laser breaking, I did have to back out of one, which I hate doing, but I just felt like it was right. It wasn't worth the travel and the um, expense if my booth wasn't gonna be full. So I just took the um, show fee hit and called it a wash for that, but less shows. So I'm thinking I'm gonna do about half of what I did last year. So right now, I'm looking at my calendar, I have I have five that I've already applied for. If you're doing any kind of art shows or in the art community, you know a lot of those shows or the bigger shows, those applications are due at like January through March. Basically Q1 is like planning your year, getting stuff on the calendar, finding out if you're accepted or not. Sometimes you don't find out until a little bit later, um, especially shows that are like later in the year. But even my show that I did last year in December, I had to have my application in by like beginning of March. So these applications are always so, so early. It does help because you kind of plan out your year in advance, but it's also a lot of like strategizing, planning your personal life around when you're going to be away, that kind of thing. And last year, I fell into the rut again and this this always happens to me and the more shows I do, the more I find it happens to me is I do show after show after show after show and then I have a good show and then I'm stressed for these next like three shows because I don't have the inventory I want. I don't feel like my booth is full. I'm worried I'm not going to make enough money because I don't have the inventory. So I think giving myself more room to expand, one, what I'm making, two, give myself some time to breathe and like fully load out, one, my stores, one, my webs, or two, my website, and just really have a more, more time. 
<laughs> it really comes back to time. And honestly, like five years from now, I would love to be a mother. I would love to like be in a whole different like part in my personal life. And I think that setting my business up for success for that now is like super, super important. Um, yes, obviously there's still going to be nights where, you know, I'm staying up late or, you know, stressed to get something done on time. And that's okay. That stress, of, that stress is good stress that I put on myself, but the stress of just feeling like I don't have enough because I have scheduled out all these shows is something that I can control. Um, so I'm applying to new shows, bigger shows, a few smaller shows that I have a really good audience in and I um, know are good for me personally. And then the rest is going to be built online. So second big change after not going to as many shows is I'm really going to spend time building more art collections. Last year I did build the efflorescence collection, which I'll put the video, I guess here. <laughs> I don't know what this was. So you can check out that full collection, but even with that collection, I think I could have done more. And again, it can't kind of came down to time. I set a deadline. How many could I get done? I only made 12 pieces and I think the low amount of pieces came from a little bit of fear, to be honest, which again, is perfectly normal. It's something that I've never done before. They're higher price items. They're one of a kind items and they're very, I want to say niche of like the style. My style um, is very things nature based. So like flowers, mountains, uh, the wood. It I, I gravitate towards all things like nature in that way. And I pretty much stay within like that subject, which I enjoy but also I have to find other people that enjoy it. So I think it being like a true flower collection, it was a great growth opportunity, but I still think I could have done more. So I'm excited to build larger collections this year, more collections this year, because that really was the only one other than Mosaic Madness. And we do that every year, which we'll talk about. Um, but I am excited to step into just something new again scary when you're spending time and effort to like build something and you're unsure of if it's going to sell or not but what i found was even if i didn't sell them during the collection day which i think i sold three of the 12 that day the launch day they gradually sold at shows like afterwards so building collections in line with my show schedule is kind of what I'm looking at for this year. So again, online launch is always going to be first and my email list always gets first dibs. So I'll put my little uh, email sign up thingy form, <laughs> whatever it's called, um, down below. That's what I call like my VIPs. You get first access anytime I drop anything and I like really stick to that because if you like my stuff enough to like get emails like once or twice a month from me, you're a real one and uh, you deserve to get full access. So, um, where was I going with that? Oh, but anyway, so building my collections in line with like where I have shows is going to be like really important to me. So I've kind of roughly sketched out where I think my shows are going to be while also still giving myself space. That's the hard thing. And I th think I know where my launches are going to fall like within that. But it, it could always change. And, and depending on like what I get accepted to, just because I applied to these shows doesn't mean I will get accepted. So uh, that's something to consider too, because say if I apply to all three and I don't get accepted to all three, then my show strategy is going to completely change. So changing shows, building art, and then number three is I am taking customs again. <laughs> I'm really excited to jump back into this. I didn't take customs last year. I did take a few of people that like I knew, but honestly I did not do a good job with it. 
I hate when I have people waiting for things or um, they're asking me about things and honestly that's on me for just not having great communication and it's something I knew I had to address this year if I was going to take customs again and so I've kind of written out my whole process and you know what's my timeline for getting back to people answering people on things um, created created a whole back-end organization I've been using Asana which I really really like um, for just giving me due dates on things setting myself up for success so I don't lose anything I think one thing with not having a system in place was people would request things I would say yeah yeah, yeah we'll get to it and then like it would fall off and I would lose it and again that's on me and that's not responsible of me as a business owner and I do take this very seriously but the way I was running customs did not seem like it and I didn't like that so completely changed the back end of how I'm gonna look at customs I have been faux using it for a couple months now and it seems to be working pretty well I just heard on a podcast the other day, you should try something for like 90 days before you're like, this is it. So I'm still kind of like in that 90 day window and I haven't taken on a lot of custom requests yet because I didn't have them open. But now that people are starting to know that I have them open, the requests have kind of started coming in and it's been helping me like use that system and just get better at communicating and letting you guys know where the heck you are on the list, when your custom is coming, and just setting myself a timeline too. I would hold customs for way too long, and I'm not doing that anymore. It has to be four to six weeks. I have to keep myself to that schedule, and especially if people are paying for like a certain piece, they need to get it on time. So that's just kind of my new guidelines for myself, which I, I did honestly just didn't have in place, and that's kind of why I stopped taking customs even though I still snuck some in um, because I just knew I didn't have that system and I never gave myself the time to like do customs either. So with doing less shows, that's going to give me more time to focus on, again, just truly those one of a kind pieces, whether it's customs or art pieces. And it feels good. I'm excited about it. I'm excited to jump into something new. I'm excited to continue just to grow my craft and technique. I feel like every year I can see my craftsmanship and just like how I'm creating pieces evolve and change and I I really want to challenge myself this year on just learning some more techniques um, and maybe some more mediums. I've been playing with oil painting um, which I don't have down yet. I don't feel confident in it yet but it's something I love. Um, it's something I love seeing when other people do it um, and I just love the look of it so possibly playing with oil painting. I also want to uh, jump into um, some more like finer woodworking um, things um, whether it's like splines on my frames, um, using a router table which I've never used before. I'm dying to buy a bandsaw so maybe that will happen this year. I don't really know but just elevating my craft um which will in turn like elevate my products and make my customs even better and even more unique so and the fourth is just being more consistent with social media i've had so much fun with youtube and honestly i've kind of drawn back my time on other apps and have been spending so much time on youtube so thank you for being here if you're watching this but it's been so fun it's been a creative outlet for me to um learn how to edit videos i've always liked editing videos but the long form is so much different than the short form so getting my brain to think in a different way for both has been really fun and i found for me I just enjoy long form. I enjoy watching other YouTubers, other small businesses, just like vloggers, um, other like how-to videos. And honestly, I would rather do that than like watch TV or anything else. So I have had so much fun. So again, thank you if you're here for this journey. But um, basically what I've been doing is I think I'm going to try, and we're gonna emphasize try, because 
again, I'm not a full-time content creator. I make my money from making products, um, and obviously editing videos takes away from uh, time I could be making products, but I love it, so we're doing it. So I'm gonna try to get out two videos a week, at least until shows start up, which is going to be like end of May. So maybe for like the first six months of the year, I'm gonna try to get out two videos a week and just see if I can do it. Again, if you're new here, I do a mix of studio vlogs, which is gonna be something like this, telling you about my business, telling you about the ins and outs of how I'm running my business, behind the scenes. I do woodworking vlogs, so in the shop, what I'm working on, what I'm making down in my wood shop slash basement, and then just some like general personal vlogs. I kind of like to intermix them together. I think that's such a cool way to like learn about people, learn about their business, but then also just get like a full glimpse in their life because running a business is not easy. <laughs> um, but I want to spend time on doing more things that I enjoy and I know I enjoy this, so I'm going to make sure I am setting aside time to film and edit. So those are the four big changes that are coming to my business. Um, rattling them out sounds kind of overwhelming, um, but I'm excited and I think the best advice that I ever got from when I lived in the corporate world of retail um, my manager basically said like how do you eat an elephant because I easily get overwhelmed when I see all the things in front of me and the answer is one bite at a time so every month every quarter just looking at like what can I improve on what can I work on how can I make this better and I think the only way we do that is if we're very honest with ourselves uh, a little bit of tough love a little bit of discipline as they say um, and I know I sure as heck could use more of that. So for my YouTube journey, a little glimpse into what is coming up. So like I said, I'm gonna continue to do some like behind the scenes studio vlogs, whether it's prepping, packing, painting. I call this like my studio where I paint, assemble, do all that stuff. Um, we have some new machinery coming next month which definitely gonna do some videos on that. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you probably already know what it is, but I'm gonna kinda keep it a surprise for now because I want to, I wanna do kinda like a little maybe mini series on it, just like set up, um, what's going on with it. I have to literally change my entire wood shop to fit this, so there's gonna be some like rearranging going on, all that stuff, so. Um, that's exciting, which is coming next month. Um, Mosaic Madness is happening, which is um, something we do every year. So um, I made a Mosaic Madness video last year where I literally just included like all of Mosaic Madness into one video. But this year I want to do, again, kind of like a series of um, the building, the process, the design, I felt like what I showed last year was like so minimal to like what goes into building Mosaic Madness. And for those of you who don't know what that is, basically I build a bracket of new products every March and have you guys vote on them on Instagram, TikTok, and now YouTube, which is so exciting, of which are your favorites. and. Basically from there, we see who are the winners, they roll through a bracket, and then we crown the champion right before the launch, and then they will launch the end of March. So there will be 24 new pieces for the year 2024 in March. And I haven't started yet. So I need to get rolling on Mosaic Madness pieces, but it's always such a fun uh, time of the year. And honestly, like sometimes I'll build something and be like, this is a winner. Like this is gonna be like top three for sure. And it gets voted out the first round. And it shows me how much I don't know <laughs> sometimes. But it's so much fun to just see like what you guys like. And honestly, it's my time to play. So I get to try some new colors, some new techniques, some new things that I haven't tried before and see what you guys like. So Mosaic Madness is so fun. Get ready for those videos coming out 
hopefully starting next week. But yeah, that is my four changes coming up for 2024. Again, thank you so much for coming along the ride with me. It has been such a fun journey jumping into YouTube and I can't wait to make more with you. So if you haven't, please like and subscribe, especially if you've made it this far. It does really help the channel out. And I just can't wait to build with you. So until next time, I'm Emily. I'll catch you at the Mosaic Madness vlog.